I'm Mike Stone and I'm an emergency physician and a point of care ultrasound specialist and I'm going to show you how to assess a patient with shortness of breath or dyspnea using the IQ. Typically looking at a patient who's short of breath with ultrasound will include an assessment of the heart, the lungs, and potentially the lower extremity veins. With a traditional ultrasound system that involves switching to two or three different transducers and we're going to show how quickly and easily you can assess a patient looking at the heart, the lungs, and the lower extremity veins using just the IQ. So to start We'll pick a cardiac preset. We'll get parasternal views first, and we'll put the transducer just to the left of the sternum with the indicator up towards the patient's right shoulder. And we'll end up with a parasternal long axis view here where we're able to assess for pericardial fluid. We're able to look at global LV contractility. And we're able to get a general sense of RV and LV ratios to look for RV strain or enlargement. We can then rotate the transducer to the patient's left shoulder and get a parasternal short axis view, in this case mid-ventricular view at the level of the papillary muscles, looking for LV contractility, for pericardial fluid, or for flattening of the interventricular septum or signs of RV enlargement. From here, we'll place the transducer with the indicator towards the bed, just under the nipple in the anterior axillary line, looking for an apical four-chamber view. And this view can really be optimized if the patient's rolled into a decubitus position, but for a patient who's short of breath, it's often really challenging to get that patient to lay down on their side right away as they're short of breath. So sometimes this can be a limited view, but in this case, we're able to look at LV and RV ratios and see that the LV is bigger than the RV, which is normal and what we're anticipating. We'll move on to a subcostal view, so indicator to the patient's left, just under the xiphoid process and we're looking for fluid surrounding the heart. We're looking for any signs of LV or RV dysfunction from this view as well. And from this view, if we place the indicator towards the ceiling or towards the patient's head, we're also able to get a look at the vena cava. And in this case, we can see that it's flattening with respiration. There's no plethora to the vena cava or failure of it to collapse with respiration, which could indicate an obstructive cause of shock like pulmonary embolism or heart failure. We'll then move on to the lungs, and traditionally we'd be changing transducers at this stage, but here we can just go to the lung preset, take a look in the parasternal windows, and assess for pneumothorax with lung sliding, look for A lines versus B lines, which could indicate clear lungs versus congested lungs or fluid-filled lungs. And in this case, we have an A line pattern, which is normal, with normal lung sliding. We'll place the transducer similarly on the left chest, and get the same view of normal lung sliding in A-lines, a little bit more lateral on the chest wall on the left so that we can avoid the heart for another view of lung sliding in A-lines showing no B-lines. And in this case, we've really seen no cause for this patient's shortness of breath. We may consider in the right clinical context if we're worried about pulmonary embolism, just moving down to the legs to take a look for proximal deep venous thrombosis, which would be an indirect confirmation of a pulmonary embolism. And again, instead of changing transducers, we'll just move on to a vascular deep vein preset. We'll come down to the leg, and we'll start off in the femoral vein with the indicator to the patient's right in a transverse orientation at the top of the leg. We'll identify the femoral vein, in this case the common femoral vein, compressing it, sliding down the leg and following the common femoral vein, compressing as we go. And I would typically follow all the way to the knee. In this case, we'll abbreviate the exam and show the popliteal exam, which would follow the full course of the femoral vein. So a posterior approach here, we identify the popliteal vein. It's compressible. We'll follow the popliteal vein down until it trifurcates. So that's an evaluation of a patient with shortness of breath or dyspnea using the IQ.